In this video, I'll be showing you how to build a time blocking calendar in Notion. I'll actually be showing you two different methods that suit different types of people, so you'll definitely find something that works for you. And just in case you didn't know, time blocking is a time management method where you simply divide your day into blocks of time and assign tasks to each block. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this video, as I do upload new Notion tutorials every week. As I said, I am going to be showing you two different time blocking methods. So this is the first one. It's a weekly schedule and we have the time down this side. And then over here is where you can actually input your tasks and time block. As you can see, I've also set up this call button that will just clear the schedule for you. So if you want to reset at any point, you can just click this button and it will completely empty the schedule so you can start from scratch. This type of time blocking method would be perfect for anyone that just wants an overview of the types of work that they're going to be doing, but doesn't necessarily want to add really specific individual tasks. So that's why, as you can see, I've just got things like client work here rather than a specific client that I'm working on. Obviously, you could amend it to work like that, but I do think the second method that I'm going to show you would work better if you want to include individual specific tasks. And this is the second time blocking method that I've come up with. So as you can see, this one is a calendar view and it displays each of the tasks on the day of the week. And you can see the time slot that they fall into. And you can also mark them as complete when they're finished. And you can also highlight which ones here are important tasks as well. This time blocking method would work perfectly for anyone that has really specific tasks that they want to add into their calendar and the tasks might vary depending on the day or the week. So as you can see here I've got film YouTube video, edit YouTube video, whereas on the previous example I just blocked out YouTube for certain parts of the day. So it's great if you have lots of varying tasks. And in the rest of this video I'm going to be showing you how you can set up both of these time blocking methods completely from scratch within Notion. And we'll start with the weekly schedule. So I've just created a brand new page within Notion. I'm just naming it time blocking calendar and I've simply just added an icon and a cover photo. You also just want to ensure that your page is set to full width. So to do that, you can click on the three dots in the corner and just ensure this full width toggle is on and that's just gonna make the page wider so there's a bit more room to work with. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a new database for our weekly schedule. So I'm gonna type forward slash database and we're gonna go with this database inline option. I'm simply just gonna name this one time blocking schedule. And I'm also just gonna hide the title because we don't need to see it. So if you click on the three dots here and hide the title, and we're also just gonna delete this tags property as well because we don't need that either. So in this first column here, we are gonna input the time of day for our time blocking. So I'm actually just gonna click on here and change the name of this column to time. And if you like, you can also change this icon as well to this clock. So it's completely up to you how you want to do your schedule. I'm gonna start mine at 7 a.m. And from there, I'm gonna do hourly intervals. So the next one is gonna be 8 a.m. But if you would prefer to do them every half an hour, then you can do that or even every 10 minutes. If you want to go really in depth, it's completely up to you. For me, I'm just gonna stick with the hourly intervals. But as they say, just do whatever works best for you. So this is what mine looks like now. I've gone all the way from 7 a.m. all the way through till 11 p.m. And we can also make this column a bit smaller. So if you just hover here and just drag it in, it will just become a bit smaller so there's a bit more room over here for the rest of the schedule. So just before we jump back into the tutorial I just want to mention that my new second brain template is now available on my store. It's a super advanced all-in-one productivity system. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested. So that's all back to the tutorial. The next thing we're going to do is add a select property. So I'm going to click on this plus symbol here and we are going to go with this select property here and I'm actually just going to name this one Monday because that's the first day of the week. And what we're going to do is add some options to select from within the schedule so you can click on this add an option button here to type in your first option so you essentially just want to cover all of the different tasks or activities that you may want to add into your schedule so let's start with some obvious ones like breakfast lunch and dinner so I'm simply just going to type breakfast hit enter and that's then going to be added as an option let's also do lunch and dinner next you might also want to add in some common work tasks that you do so let's just do client work emails for me, I'm going to add YouTube. I'm also going to add some free time activities. So for example, I really like yoga. So I'm going to add that in. And you might also want to add just something like relax or free time just for that time. For example, in the evening where you just do whatever you want to do. And I'm also going to add in wake up and sleep so that I can add in my wake up and go to bed times. So those are the options that I'm adding, but feel free to add as many options in here as you like. You might want to go a little bit more in depth, especially when it comes to work. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as this. I also want to color code these depending on the type of task so it just makes it a little bit easier looking at your schedule what you have to do so let's start with the food ones let's make them all pink so i'm just going to click on each one and select the color for work let's make those blue 
So this is now what it looks like. So it looks a little bit more organized. So now that we have all of our options, I'm now going to create another column for each different day of the week. So to avoid having to type in all of those options all over again, we're simply just going to duplicate the Monday property. So to do that, you just want to click on here and then just select the duplicate property option. And that's just going to add another one. So I can simply just click on here and let's change the name of this to Tuesday and so on. So I'm just going to keep doing that, duplicating it and changing the day of the week all the way up to Sunday. Okay. So now that I've done that, this is what it looks like. I am just going to make each of the columns just a little bit smaller so that I can see all of them without having to scroll across. So I'm just going to pull each one in just a little bit and make them all a similar size. So this is now what it looks like. So next we can actually start adding things into the schedule. So let's start by adding something in the 7 a.m. slot on Monday. So you simply just want to click on the box. It's going to display all of the different options. So let's just add a wake up in this one as an example. So you can add that for every single day of the week. Let's set it a little bit later on the weekend. And you just want to spend a little bit of time building this up. So another thing I really love is that if a item goes over several time slots, you can simply add it in. Let's go with emails and you can actually just drag this here down and it will add it to all of the boxes for you. So it's a quick and easy way to time block across multiple different slots. So this is what it should look like when you filled it all out. So as I said earlier, this would work well for someone that just wants a general idea of how their day is going to be structured, but you don't necessarily want really specific tasks that would work better with the calendar that I'm going to show you next. One other final thing that I do want to add on here is I want a clear schedule button so that if you do want to reset this at the end of the week, you can easily just fully clear it and make it empty so you can start from scratch. So what we're going to do is add a button up here at the top. So I'm going to type in forward slash button and select this button block here. We're simply going to call this one clear schedule. And I'm also just going to click on here to add an icon. I think what we're going to go with is this X circle here. So that's what the button will look like. We're then going to click on add an action to tell it what we want it to do. So we're actually going to edit the pages within the below database and you just need to select the database you want to amend. So this one is going to be the time blocking schedule database. Next, you want to select the property that you want to edit. So we're going to start with the Monday property. And if you actually click on here, it will allow you to select what you want to change it to. So in this case, we actually want to leave it empty. So that's so I'm just going to leave it blank. I'm not going to select anything and we're just going to click edit another property and we're then going to select Tuesday and exactly the same. We're just going to leave it empty and so on. So you just want to keep adding each of these into the button until you've got all the way through till Sunday. So this is what the button should look like. And once you've done that, you can simply click done and let's just check that the button works. So if I click clear schedule, as you can see, it just empties the entire thing and deletes everything. So you can now start from scratch. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the name of the this tab. So if I just click on here and select rename, let's just change it to weekly schedule. And you can also change this icon as well if you like. I'm just going to change it to this calendar. And that's it. That's the first time blocking method complete. Next, I'm going to show you how to build this time blocking calendar. So the first thing we're going to do is add a brand new database for our calendar. So I'm actually going to type in forward slash calendar and select this calendar view database. Now it's going to ask me if I want to select an existing database, but in this case we don't, we want a brand new database. So I'm just going to select this new calendar option and you can give it a name. Let's just call it time blocking calendar. And I'm just going to hide the title because I don't really think we need to see it. So this is the basic calendar. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually switch this to a weekly view rather than a monthly view. If you would prefer the monthly view like this, then feel free to leave it as it is. But I do think it's easier to see when you have lots of tasks on the weekly view. So we're going to click on the three dots here, select layout and where it says show calendar as we're going to select week. And as you can see, that's just changed it to a weekly view. Now I have my notion set to start the week on a Monday, but you may notice that your starts on a Sunday. So if you want to switch that, then you can do that in the Notion settings. So you just want to hover up here and you'll see this side menu appear. Click on settings and members, language and region. And as you can see, there's this toggle here to start the week on a Monday. So just select whichever option works best for you. I've got it toggled on because I like to start the week on a Monday. So we're going to start by adding our first tasks into the calendar. So let's add something on Monday. So I'm going to click on this plus symbol here to add an item. And that's going to open up this page where I can actually write the task. So let's just start simple and let's just add breakfast in here. So as you can see, Notion has all automatically added this date property for us based on the fact that this is a calendar database and it does also add this tags property as default but we don't actually need that so I am just going to click on here and delete it. I'm also just going to add an icon to this page because I think it would look nice if everything had an icon so I'm just going to click add icon and let's go on notions icon library rather than the emojis and I'm actually just going to pick this check mark here but feel free to pick any icon you like you may even want to have different icons for different types of tasks but for now I'm just going to keep 
keep the same one just to keep this nice and simple. Next, we're going to add a property for the time of day that we want to complete this task. So we're actually going to add another property here. And the one we're going to go for is a select property. And I'm actually just going to rename this time. And we're going to start by adding some options by clicking this button here and just typing them out. So I'm going to start by adding the different time slots in here as an option. So we're going to start from 7 a.m. till 8 a.m. as the first time slot. As I said earlier, if you do want to do half an hour time slots or even shorter time slots, it's completely up to you. Just create the slots that work best for you. But I'm doing hourly intervals. I'm then just going to hit enter and it's going to add that as an option. So next we're going to do 8 a.m. until 9 a.m. and so on. I'm just going to go all the way through until 11 p.m. Yeah. So I finished adding all the options. So this is what it looks like. Now, one thing I do want to mention is it's really important that you have the time slots in the correct order. So just make sure that none of them are out of place there fully in the correct order. If you did add them the wrong way by mistake, you can just click on here to drag them and place them in the correct order. Next, I think it would be useful to actually color code the times based on the time of day. So for the early morning slots, let's make those red. For the rest of the morning slots, I'm gonna make those yellow. For the afternoon, I'm gonna make them green. For early evening, I'm going to make those blue and for later on in the evening let's make those purple okay so this is now what it looks like so it's much more easier to understand okay so let's start by adding a time slot for breakfast so if I click on here it's going to let me choose the time of day so let's go with 9 a.m. I also want to add a checkbox so that I can check off tasks once they're complete so we're going to click on add a property and let's just add a checkbox and I'm going to name this one markers complete and that's all we need to do and let's just put that at the bottom so these are the three properties that we have so if I just click back now onto our calendar. The first thing I want to do is just quickly add a default icon so that whenever I add a new task it's going to get this icon, this little check mark icon as default so I don't need to add it every single time. So to do that you can click on this downward arrow here and select new template and I'm simply just going to click on add an icon and add that exact same check mark icon and leave everything else blank and we're going to hit back. And once again, we're going to click on the arrow and here is that template that we just set up with the icon. So I'm simply just going to click on the three dots and set it as default. And you'll just want to select for all views. So that's just going to save us a little bit of time when we add new tasks. So as you can see, that breakfast item that we added is now displaying on our calendar. But I do also want to see the time slot and the checkbox on here. So let's click on the three dots up here, select properties, and you'll see all of the different properties here. And you just want to unhide the ones you want to see. So let's start with the time property. So if I just click on there, as you can see, it's now displayed. And let's also display this checkbox. So now that we've done that, this is what the card looks like. And as you can see, you can actually check off this checkbox directly from the card. So I'm just going to add one more item on here. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol. Let's just say this one is emails. As you can see, that icon was added for me by default. And let's just put a time slot later in the day, maybe 3 p.m. till 4 p.m. And as you can see, that's now appearing on our calendar. Now, one issue that we have currently is that if I add something else, let's just add another one. Let's go with yoga. If I select an earlier time slot that is before some of the ones I've already added, it's not going to account for that. So let me just put this one, for example, at 10 a.m. And let's go back here. So as you can see, because I've added this one last, it's appearing at the bottom of the list. But if you actually look at the times, they're not now in the correct order, which is a little bit annoying. I would prefer if they were in the correct order so I could just work my way down the list throughout the day. So to fix that, we're going to add a sort. So if you just go up here and click on this little sort icon here, and we actually want to sort this based on the time. Now, once I've added that, it is now sorting them based on the time, but it's the wrong way around. So I am just going to change this to descending so that it goes from morning through till night. Now, remember earlier when we added the options for these times, that's what it's basing it on. So that's why it's really important that you have the options in this box in the exact correct order because it's basing the sort on the order of the options within this list. So I'm just going to add a few more items in the calendar so that we have a bit more data to work with. Now, one thing that I want to show you how to do is how to mark a task as urgent. So I think the easiest way to do that is to simply just click on the icon here and select this exclamation mark emoji here. So if I click on that, it's going to add it here. So you can easily see that this task here is really urgent and definitely has to get completed. One other thing that I want to show you how to do, this is completely optional and up to you, is you can actually get the tasks that have been completed to disappear from the calendar. So as I said, it's up to you depending on if you want to see the tasks that you have completed or not. But if you do want to add that option, you can simply click on this filter button here and we're going to filter based on the markers complete checkbox. And in this case, we only want to see items where the markers complete 
complete checkbox is unchecked. So as soon as I've added that, as you can see, those items here that have been checked off have now disappeared. I'm going to delete this filter for now because I actually want to see all of the tasks, including the ones that have been completed, but it's completely up to you. I just wanted to show you how to do that. And the final thing that I want to show you how to do is how to add repeating tasks for things that you do at the same time every day. So for example, I've got on here breakfast and I've added it every single day from nine till 10. Now it is going to take a lot of time if I have to add this every single day. So we can actually set up a recurring task so that Notion will automatically add it for you. So to do that, if we click on this little arrow here, we're going to add a new template. So let's do breakfast as an example. So I'm going to name this breakfast and you can also add the icon. So I'm going to stick with that same check mark icon. But if you want to pick a specific icon just for breakfast, then feel free to do that. On the date property, we're going to click on here and we're going to select today. Now, as you can see, it says it's the date when duplicated. So that means that this property is going to be populated with whatever day it is when this is duplicated. So we're going to click that for now. You can also select the time slot. So this one, let's say that I have breakfast every day at 9 a.m. So I'm going to select that as the time slot. I'm going to leave this checkbox unchecked. So we're now going to click back. And if we click on the arrow again, we can now see that breakfast template that we've just set up. Now we actually want to set this to repeat every single day. So it appears automatically on my calendar every day. So to do that, click on the three dots, select repeat, and you can choose the frequency that you want it to repeat as. So I'm going to go with daily, but there are so many different options. You can get things to repeat on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, or even just certain days of the week, like every Friday or every Tuesday and Wednesday. So in this example, we're going to click daily. So I'm going to leave it as every one day. But as I said, if for example, you wanted something to repeat every other day, you could change this to every two days and it would do that for you. But we're going to leave it as every one day. And I'm just going to click save. So now every single day at midnight, the breakfast template is going to be duplicated and added to the current day on the calendar. Now you can add as many of these as you like. So you could add one for all of your different meals. You can add it for any other tasks that you do regularly. The only downside that I want to mention is that the breakfast template is going to be duplicated on the day itself. So if I just go to next week on the calendar, as you can see, it's completely empty. But on the morning of the 6th of May, I'm going to wake up, come to my calendar, and any of the repeating templates will have been duplicated. So it will appear on the day when I come and look at it, but it doesn't allow you to look forward at all of those tasks. So that's the only downside to using the repeating tasks feature within Notion. And that's it. That is the time blocking calendar. You can check out all of my pre-made Notion templates over on my store, including this super advanced second brain template, which is an all-in-one productivity system. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you did find this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I post new Notion tutorials like this one every week.